I don't know about you, but in my house, autumn means baking season. Today, I'm excited to share three of my favorite autumn-inspired loaf recipes, including a delicious banana walnut loaf, a super tasty pumpkin spice loaf, and finally, a savory, cheesy zucchini loaf that your family is going to love. Let's get started with our banana walnut loaf. All right, so I've got my oven preheating to 375 and I've got a greased loaf pan standing by. For this recipe, we're gonna mix our dry ingredients first and then our wet ingredients and then combine the two. That makes for the best baked goods. So I'm starting with some flour in a large mixing bowl and to that, I'm going to add some baking powder for lift, a little bit of salt, and some sugar. I'm going to give this a quick stir with my whisk to make sure it's all well combined and then I'm gonna set it aside. So in a second bowl, we are going to mix together our eggs and then we're going to add some yogurt. To that, we are going to add about a quarter of a cup of melted butter. So I'm going to mix these together and then to that, I'm going to add a splash of vanilla extract and some mashed bananas. Now I'm using three mashed bananas in this recipe, which equals about a cup. You wanna use extra ripe bananas because we're not using a ton of sugar, so the bananas really are gonna provide a lot of the sweetness here. I'm gonna mix all this together really well and then pour my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients. We're gonna combine those ingredients really, really well and then to that, we are going to add some chopped walnuts. You could also use pecans if you prefer, but I love the combination of banana walnut. I think it's absolutely perfect. Once they're well combined, we're gonna pour them into our greased loaf pan and pop them in the oven for 60 to 70 minutes or until the loaf has been set. Now, if you're finding that the top of your loaf is browning too quickly, you can always tent a little bit of foil over top to prevent it from getting so dark. Let it cool completely and then serve it with a heaping helping of butter. So clearly I didn't let it cool completely because who has ever been able to wait for banana bread to cool completely? Okay, so before we get to our amazing pumpkin spice loaf, which is absolutely delicious by the way, I wanna tell you about a really exciting giveaway that we're doing on the channel. So if you're anything like me, when you're baking, you have your tablet out on your counter because you need it for the recipes. Now, what happens in my kitchen is that I have explosions of flour and all things go everywhere and I end up destroying my tablet. So the awesome people at Otterbox sent me this cool system called the Otterbox Agility Tablet System, which basically protects your tablet while you're cooking. How novel is that? Now you can use it other places, not just in the kitchen, but of course my tablet basically lives here, so that's where I use it most. Now not only does this system protect your tablet from things like drops and spills, it also has this nifty little stand feature and can be mounted on your cupboards, so you can be reading your recipe as you're cooking. It's kind of amazing. And the best part about this whole thing is that we have an extra OtterBox Agility System to give away to one of our viewers. That could mean you. So be sure to check out the description box below for all the details to find out how you can enter to win one of these bad boys. Super fun, right? Okay, now on to our pumpkin spice loaf. Now this stuff is so delicious and it's reminiscent of the stuff you might find at a coffee shop we all know and love. In a large mixing bowl, I've got some flour standing by and to that I'm going to add some baking powder, some salt and some pumpkin pie spice. Now, you could totally buy store-bought pumpkin pie spice, that's fine, but I prefer to make my own. If you don't know how to make your own, I have a great recipe on thedomesticgeek.com, or you can click this thumbnail and see me make my pumpkin spice recipe from scratch. It's absolutely delicious, and it's great to have on hand for all sorts of baked goods, just like this. Now, to that, we are going to add some brown sugar. We're gonna mix these ingredients up really, really well, set them aside, and then get started on our wet ingredients. So we've got our eggs, we've got our yogurt, and of course we have our melted butter. And to that we are adding some pumpkin puree, because what would pumpkin spice loaf be without our pumpkin puree? I'm using the canned kind, you could totally puree your own, but it's a lot of work, it's a big commitment, so do so at your, <laughs> do so at your own risk. So we're gonna mix all this together, we're gonna pour our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients, combine them well. This is why I need something to protect my tablet from me because I am a hot mess in the kitchen. And then to that, we are going to add some pumpkin seeds. Now you can totally leave out the pumpkin seeds if you want to, but I love them because they add a little bit of color and a little bit of crunch to the final product. We're gonna mix this all together, pour it into our loaf pan, and then just sprinkle a couple more pumpkin seeds on the top. Just makes it extra pretty. Into the oven this guy goes at 375 for 60 to 70 minutes or until you can stick a toothpick in and it comes out clean. Let it cool completely and then serve it with some delicious butter. He's just so happy. Really, really happy.
It is so good and the house is going to smell like fall. Now, you may have tried zucchini bread before in sweet forms, but today I wanted to show you a little bit of a departure and do something savory. So, we are making a cheesy zucchini bread and it is so super good and I really enjoy it most when it's covered in cream cheese. I'm just saying. So in our large mixing bowl, we are starting with the same ingredients. We've got some flour, we've got some baking powder, we've got some salt, and to that we are going to add some garlic powder. Now, do not mistake garlic powder for garlic salt because we already added some salt and let me tell you, it will not taste very good. And then I'm also going to hit this with a good helping of pepper and it can take stand up to quite a lot of pepper. So we're gonna mix those dry ingredients together and set this bowl aside. In a second bowl, we are going to mix together some eggs, some yogurt, some melted butter, and a cup of shredded zucchini. Now I just shredded my zucchini with the skin on because I love the additional color that you get from it. You could totally peel it if you wanted to. It's really your call. And then finally, we are going to add some sharp white cheddar cheese. Now you could add a combination of sharp white cheddar and Parmesan, that would be super delicious, but I didn't have any Parmesan on hand, so we're adding all sharp white cheddar. All right, so we're gonna pour these wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Tell me if you've heard this one already. And this is going to feel fairly dry when you're mixing it up, but remember that all of that beautiful zucchini has a ton of water content that it's just gonna release as it bakes. And then we're going to finish it off with some thyme leaves. Now I love the combination of the cheese and the zucchini and the garlic and a little bit of thyme. It's so, so beautiful and it will make your house smell incredible, I promise you. And then we're gonna pour it into our loaf pan. I'm gonna top it with a couple more thyme leaves just because it looks nice. And then into the oven it goes at 375 for 60 to 70 minutes or until it's baked. And then when you're done, you pull it out, you let it cool, you cut it into slices, and then you top it with butter or cream cheese. Get out of town, this stuff is outrageous. So you can find all of these great recipes in the description box below or on thedomesticgeek.com. And of course, don't forget to enter for your chance to win your own OtterBox agility system. This thing is so cool and super handy in the kitchen. And of course, if you do try any of these great recipes, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchen. And finally, before I run out of breath, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to The Domestic Geek because there's lots more deliciousness where this came from.